terminal velocity collision course by Elton Gar. Sir, we have another code for coming in, the young soldier said, as she watched the computer screen intently. Only a couple of years ago, the alarm would have put everyone into a near panic, but over the last few years, the code fours had become routine. Dispatch the fighters, General Smith said. They already launched, but they will need your order, the soldier said. Give me the numbers. The ship is traveling at approximately half the speed of light. It's a TX-3 cargo ship that weighs about 6 tons. It will reach Earth in about 12 minutes and strike somewhere in the middle of Europe. The resulting strike would Kill millions of people. The general finished. You have about 10 minutes to decide, the young woman said. I'll give them five. I'm not taking any chances today. Are we receiving any signals? General Smith asked. Nothing. But once the fighters reach their target, they can try short-range communication, the woman said. You have that long to get me everything there is to know about the crew of that ship, the general said. A half a dozen people began the frantic search for information. After just over three minutes of silence, the woman said. It's a 36-year-old ship bought two years ago by Samuel Chain. From the records, he's been losing money ever since. He dismissed his last crew member about two weeks ago. Seems like someone who could be desperate enough to make a suicide attempt, General Smith said. There was always a chance of a malfunction or someone flying recklessly, but those were far less likely than someone who was just desperate and angry. The general took a deep breath. This was an easy decision. The cargo ship held one person who likely wanted to die. Earth had 9 billion people. But it was still an order to kill someone, and that deserved to be difficult. It should weigh on someone's conscience. That was why he gave the order, rather than forcing some 25-year-old kid in a fighter to decide whether to shoot. When he reached down to tap in the code, he saw a red flashing light. They had lost the signal. When did we lose contact with our fighters? General Smith asked, tapping commands out on his chair's built-in keyboard, trying to get a signal. Just now, sir. There was a solar flare. Get someone in the air. I don't care who it is, and make certain they know to shoot that thing down, the general said. There isn't time to reach it at the speed that ship is going, the woman said. Then call Earth, the general said. Sir, this command is designed to be isolated, the woman said. He knew that, of course. It was one of the security features of this place. Complete isolation kept it free from both attack and being influenced by politics. It was the only way that the countries of Earth had been willing to let them have so much authority. Well, do something, the general said. Without communication, they couldn't even warn anyone that the ship was coming. I'm doing what I can, sir, the woman said. She knew how important this was. They all did. A ship the size of the one flying towards Earth at the speed it was going was a weapon more powerful than anything anyone had ever used in a war. And they had to get this right every time because there were thousands of ships in the solar system, and more every year. Each was potentially a weapon powerful enough to kill millions or billions. So far they had been lucky. The first person who took the genocidal way out had been in a ship not much bigger than an airplane. The metal lump left after it slammed into the atmosphere, created an explosion bigger than any nuclear bomb ever set off on Earth, and caused enough damage to convince everyone that a system had to be put into place to stop the next attack. This wasn't the next time. There had been 23 attempts in the 20 years since. General Smith had been here for 17 of them, and had ordered the fighters to destroy 15. He had even taken part in the cover-ups in the hope it would discourage the next attack, or at least stop people from panicking. If they failed this time, there wouldn't be a next attack. This ship was a hundred times the size of the first and only ship to reach Earth. They told themselves millions because it was easier, but the truth was that it was billions, perhaps even genocide. But without a signal, General Smith was as helpless as everyone on the surface. He just hoped that one of the pilots realized they had lost signal, 
and disobeyed a direct order. Watching the clock tick down, the general resisted the urge to keep fiddling with the computer. He had sent the order, and the computer would continue to send out the message long after it didn't matter anymore. While he watched, the general said, Lieutenant, have you ever heard about the great filter? I don't think I have, General, the young woman said. It's a possible answer to the question, where are all the aliens? The theory is that as species advance, they gain the ability to destroy themselves, and then they do it. Like a nuclear war, the lieutenant said. I think that was what they were thinking about when the theory was created. But there are still only a few people with enough power to destroy the world with nuclear weapons. And why would they? People with power aren't the ones who want everything to end. But the amount of power that an individual can hold has continued to grow. And now we have people who feel powerless while flying a ship powerful enough to obliterate life on Earth. There was a second of silence, then the lieutenant said, Sir, we just had an explosion. A fighter shot the cargo ship, the general asked. Both of them shot it, the young woman said. That made sense. The signal between the two pilots wouldn't have been lost, so they had acted together. That way neither pilot was entirely responsible for killing someone or disobeying orders. General Smith watched the explosion on the screen for several seconds before the lieutenant said, Or perhaps the aliens are just waiting to see what happens. What do you mean? The general asked, having lost track of the conversation in his thoughts. The aliens. Perhaps most of them survived the filter, but they want to see how we handle it before they talk to us. And what do you think they'll say about us today? The general asked. That we'll do what is necessary to protect other people. The lieutenant said. The general harumphed at that and said, I think they'll say we were damn lucky. I'll be in my office. Send those pilots in to talk to me when they get back. Tell them I haven't decided whether to put them up for court-martial or a medal, but I'm leaning towards the medal. Author's Note I grew up during the Cold War, and while I didn't have to practice hiding under my desk, there was an understanding that the world could end. That was something relatively new to humanity. But while there certainly was a danger, the power to destroy the world was limited to a few people. As technology has continued to advance, more people have gained more power because that's the nature of technology. And as we near the time when humans are going to begin to live in space, the danger of what a few people are able to do will increase. And when one of the people who would have gone on a shooting spree instead aims an asteroid towards Earth, it's going to be cities destroyed instead of individual lives. I don't know the solution, but I know that humanity needs to learn to help the people in our society who feel hopeless and powerless before they lash out. And while finding ways to limit the damage is important, it's not the solution people want it to be, because the solution isn't going to be that simple. It's going to be a thousand small solutions or it's not, and we're going to find ourselves in a position where a single person can kill millions, and will. But I think we'll fix it. It's just slower than I wish. If you enjoyed this story, you can sign up for my newsletter at www.ansifi.com. Just look for the free book link. Or you can get access to all of my short stories, including Patreon exclusives, at any subscription level at www.patreon.com Elton. Thank you. Elton Gar.